2005, 2005 after that Super Bowl, the first month and a half of 2005 was probably the greatest month and a half of my professional career. We beat Pittsburgh in the AFC Championship. We beat Philadelphia in the Super Bowl. I went to my first Pro Bowl. My son Dante was born January 3rd, so I had my family, my career, everything was great. It, couldn't, it can't get any better than that in the first month and a half of a year for me. And then something always comes along, it seems. Adversity strikes us when we least expect it, and this was the time for me. I came home in a day and a half after the, after the Pro Bowl. I woke up in the middle of the night with a severe, unexplained headache. Severe, unexplained headache and numbness down the left side of my body. Now, this was a day and a half after a football game. I had woken up in pain before in my career. Whether you wake up and you got a shoulder twinge or something like that, and I told myself I'd sleep it off. I didn't know that severe, unexplained headache, numbness down the left side of the body, loss of vision, all of these were stroke warning signs. I was 30 years old, professional athlete. I didn't think this could happen to me, and these are warning signs I did not know, so I went back to sleep. I woke up the next morning around 10 o'clock. My wife let me sleep in a little bit, and the severe headache had persisted. It's the worst. It was like a pounding going on in my head. I wish I could describe it to you. I just can't. I couldn't walk because the left side of my body was so numb. But got, what got to me was my oldest son, TJ, comes in every morning and will say, good morning, Daddy. And I heard him come in, but I didn't see him come in. From the left side of my body, he came in and I hear him and he flashed on the right side of my body. It turns out I lost the left field of vision in both of my eyes. I looked to my wife and said, call 911. The ambulance came and took me down to Massachusetts General Hospital. And all I remember is a bunch of doctors in white coats. If you ask me about certain things that happened that day, when I was writing that book and I was sitting down with Michael Hawley, I would say things that I thought would happen and my wife would look at me like this and said, Teddy, that didn't happen that way. That didn't happen that way. Well, I said, I'm glad you're here so we can write this book correctly. <laughs> But my neurologist put his hand on my shoulder and said, Teddy, you've had a stroke. Stroke. And that's when I looked at him and thought to myself, stroke. Now, stroke was something I only equated with my grandmother, my grandfather. I didn't know this could happen to me. I've learned since that it can happen to people much younger than me, teenagers, kids. But the only time I'd ever used the word stroke before was on a golf course. It's an honest answer. It is. I'm a 16, you're a 10, I get nine strokes. You bargain, you bargain. Bob knows that. <laughs> but so the diagnosis was made. I had lost the left field division in both of my eyes, numbness down the left side of my body. And by the way, Teddy, you have a hole in your heart that has to be surgically prepared in a month. What I'm thinking in my mind is football is over. It's over. Because just of the statement, the statement of Coming back to play professional football after a stroke, after a stroke you, you, that's a statement you don't hear. You just, you, it just doesn't happen. So I went in to see Coach Belichick, and I actually told Coach Belichick I was going to retire. It was free agency time. It was the draft time. I said, listen, Coach, I can barely walk. I can't see. I cannot drive. My wife had to drive me here because I cannot see. Please, you need to get some more linebackers in here because I cannot help you anymore. That was one of the toughest days of my life, telling him, because I thought, I, thought something, I thought something was wrong with me. I, didn't, I thought that there was a problem with, with me and my health, and I didn't know this happened regularly, and I thought, you know, I felt so ashamed driving home that day, seeing those same landmarks, you know, when you drive to work, whether it's Luciano's on Route 1, the Lafayette House, Dunkin' Donuts, all of that stuff when you go down Route 1, back to my house. It was never going to be the same again. All I wanted to get back to being was a functioning father and husband again, to be able to pick up my kids. That's all I wanted to do so I could work on it. The rehabilitation exercises that they had me do were from everything from stand on one, stand on one foot, stand on one foot with your eyes closed, stand on your left foot with your eyes closed with your arms crossed, Stand on your left, one, your left foot, arms crossed, eyes closed. Turn your head while doing multiplication tables. I couldn't even do that now. <laughs> <laughs> I 
But somehow, some way, John knows those therapists at Spalding, they get you to do it. And I got better. And I got better. And it's funny how things just creep into your head when you start to get better. And it's like, maybe I can play this game again. Maybe I can do this. But there's one thing I needed, and I, had my, I needed my sight to come back. Because you, there really, it really isn't anything that you can do to rehabilitate an eye. How do you do that? You just got to hope. And my moment for me was at 1223, 23 minutes after midnight. I woke up in the middle of the night and saw a digital clock that was placed up on our dresser. It was one of those digital clocks that have those red numbers, you know, the bottom number, the top, 1223. And in, during my rehabilitation, at first, I could not see 1223. I saw 223. I couldn't see that one off to the left because this is where I had my deficits. That bottom of that one started to come back. The top of that one started to come back. Then all of a sudden, at 1223, I saw that little battery symbol to the left. That tells you you got to put a 9-volt battery in your clock. Because if the power goes out, it's going to blink and you're going to be late for work. My neurologist, I said, doctor, tell me the name of the guy that's done this before so I can ask him the millions of questions that I have. If I get hit, if I get hit in the back, is the device in my heart going to move? I'm going to put a helmet on and hit alignment. Will my brain explode? Questions, honest questions that I asked. And there was silence on the other end of the phone. I said, doc, what's wrong? He said, Teddy, you'd be the first. I said, Doc, I'll call you back. <laughs> I, didn't know I, wanted to, I didn't know if I wanted to do it. I didn't know if I wanted to be that guy that they, I don't know if there's any doctors out there, that they put you in a data-free zone. Data-free zone. Well, what's that mean? That means when you see us every two weeks, we will fill in the data for the next guy. <laughs> so did I want to be the first? And imagine the conversation I had with my wife. When I told her, Elaine, that I want to come back and play football. No, you don't, Teddy. <laughs> Babe, I'm doing good. I can see. I think I'll be all right. Please, honey, no. I am not letting you play. And I think every woman in the audience here tonight would understand where Heidi was coming from. What she told me was, you're my husband. You're the father of me, my three kids. I don't want to put you back out there in danger. So I made a deal with her. Let's see doctor after doctor, and if there was one doctor that told me I was crazy, if there was one, that we'd stop. I remember one neurologist we saw, and we had debated taking the year off, all right, taking the year off, coming back the next year, and I said, Doc, what's the difference between me taking the year off now or playing next year? He said, well, Teddy, next year you're just going to be 33. And I looked over to my wife, and she looked like she was going to go over the desk and strangle this doctor like this. Why did you tell him that for? <laughs> But the, the, the line that we, we always were given was, Teddy, you've had a stroke. You have had a stroke. Now it's how you deal with it together as husband and wife. How you deal with your comeback. How you deal with your normal everyday activities now. Can you cope with it? Are you comfortable with calling yourself a stroke survivor? I remember my comeback game. Who do we play? Buffalo Bills. The Buffalo Bills. And my wife softened and said, okay, Teddy, you can play, but there's only one thing. You have to follow my one rule, the three-second rule. And I said, Heidi, what's the three-second rule? She said, if you're on that field for more than three seconds on the ground, I'm coming out of the stands and pulling you out of there. So get up quick. Because I'm a mess. So you can imagine my first play, my first tackle, uh, Willis McGay, he was a running back. I tackled him. I put him on the ground. Linemen come on the top. You can imagine me on the bottom. Get off. Get off. I've got three seconds, guys. Please, get off. Heidi, stay in the club. Don't come down, please. I'm okay. Stay there. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not a big statist a guy who, who pay attention to statistics or numbers but I wanted to find one statistic out. And it was how many tackles I made from 05 until I retired, from my comeback to when I retired, because I wanted to know. And I guess I made around close to 1,200 tackles, but I did the subtraction. I'm like putting the seasons together. The number's 366. I made 366 tackles as a stroke survivor. That's something I'm very proud of. 